and welcome to blog 14, uh, me learning to play the Melodeon. It's been a long while since I've done a blog, uh, mainly because I've been a bit unwell for a few months and I haven't really felt like uh, playing anything at all. So I'm afraid, uh, yeah, as I say, it's been a long gap, but I've finally got round to doing another one. And uh, thank you all those people who've uh, been asking for the blogs and been following me. I really appreciate it and it does make it seem uh, quite worthwhile. Um, as you can see, I've been working on a piece called Princess Royal, which is, uh, has been my nemesis, if you like. It's, I found it really difficult, this one, for some reason. Uh, one of the reasons was I started learning to play it on my Hona Erica, uh, which is a two-row. And then at the end of October last year, I got this three-row Sauterelle, and uh, it's a bit of a beast. In fact, I call it the beast. It's a brilliant, uh, brilliant instrument, but it's... It's caused me a few problems in that I wanted to play on this because of all the extra notes available on this uh, 0.5 row, this sort of half row here, uh, to save a lot of inning and outing. But of course I had to really sort of go back and learn, learn the piece from scratch. And for some reason, apart from being unwell, it's taken me a while to, uh, to sort it out. So um, the performance you saw at the beginning of this video was a bit nervous. Uh, it's, you know, the old... Uh, the video thing, put the video camera on and fall apart that you? but you probably get the idea of what I was trying to achieve there and I'll, I'll try and do another performance of it at the end of this video. Um, things to say before I get to Princess Royal, I actually did a, my first public performance on the Melodeon uh, back in December, uh, don't get too excited, I was just playing Silent Night at school and uh, it was a pretty terrible experience I have to say because it was outside on a freezing cold December day and uh, you know we, we went into it and suddenly my brain turned to something resembling mushy peas and my fingers felt like a load of sausages and I sort of virtually fell apart first time through. Luckily for me we had a, another stab at it and uh, I was able to, play, able to play it okay the second time. The first time was a complete embarrassing disaster. Luckily I wasn't on my own. Uh, my son was playing guitar as well so it wasn't sort of too terrible but you know I don't think I've ever been so nervous in my life and, and I've played in front of thousands of people playing the guitar, played and sung, never been a problem but for some reason playing at this, on this school playground I just went to pieces and I expect some of you have had that same experience anyway, you know, I survived, didn't really put me off but it did make me think, um, you know, I had practiced hard for it but, you know, even with a lot of practice I still got very, very nervous and uh, I think it's the same for lots of instruments that I play. If it's not the guitar, then I don't feel particularly safe. I mean, last summer I had to play the piano for my daughter's wedding, and uh, I got through it, but only by practicing, you know, crazily hard for about a month uh, before the ceremony. It, it went okay, but purely I just practiced my way through the nerves. So this Sultarel Connemara Three that I'm now using. Um, one of the keys to making some progress, and I've only really done it in the last few weeks, was changing the strap height. Um, I had it quite loose to start with, and it was, if you look at uh, my last blog, uh, it was sort of dangling down quite a bit lower. I've shortened the strap to make it higher, and for some reason that's really made it much more comfortable to play. Um, now, there are pros and cons with uh, buying a Melodeon like this against your normal two-row uh, Erica or poker work. Uh, obviously the pros are you've got extra notes um, so you don't have to do so much inning and outing and that's been that's been great for this uh, you've got much more variety of sounds because you've got the you know the different reads the medium the high low reason and, and any combination thereof you can take the thirds out of the chord so if, you know if you want to do a chord that's uh, a minor chord and you haven't got it just take the third out and it automatically becomes major or minor Lots of, uh, lots of pros there. Uh, the cons are, it's very heavy, uh, a Melodeon like this. I mean, this isn't the heaviest of the bigger Melodeons, but it certainly feels pretty heavy to me. And if you're used to playing a, an Erica or a poker work, suddenly you find you've got this small fridge sort of strapped to the front of you, and it feels pretty hard uh, to cope with. Um, I can stand up and play this, but I get very tired very quickly. That's probably my age is part of it, but... Um, you know, against my my nice lightweight Erica, it does feel like a bit of a tank. Uh, so there's a, a physical side to it, and I do find any quick bellow changes are quite hard work for me. 
And it's a beautiful instrument this, it's been really nicely looked after by its former owners and I'm trying to do the same with it. Uh, but you need to know if you buy something like this, you've got to be, be prepared for the extra weight and uh, obviously with the extra notes available it does make you think a bit more out of the box as it were um, and it does involve a few weird fingerings. Let me sort of show you what I mean. On, um, on Princess Royal I start with this. So I'm already using that extra note there on that row. Well, there's a good example there. That bit, I'll just do the right hand. See, I'm really using those extra rows there, but. But that run there involves quite a tricky bit of thing, I don't know if you can see that, I'll sort of get close up on that and you'll see that, uh, it's on the, on the pool. But, um, you know, having sort of mastered that bit, that's a bit that makes me very nervous. I bet you get bits in tunes where you come to it and think, oh, this is the bit I'm really worried about and you get a bit nervous on it, but... Um, with the left and the right um, play the same notes just bass notes with the left hand and just playing octaves with the two hands that's rather nice isn't it I put a little run up there and then here now here see in a, on, a, on an Erica on my Erica I was playing in and out in, but here I've got the, the notes that I need in the same pulling direction on the extra rows. I mean, a bit of a downside to this is if you play, if you use that note on the extra row, you kind of lose the feel a bit. Part of the, the joy of the melodeon is that, that movement in and out, and I actually prefer the sound of it going in and out, but I don't prefer the physical effort involved, so I've, I've gone for the easy option. And play and I played that note on the extra row. So you know that gives you a bit of an idea about what I've been working on. Um, I haven't stopped playing my other two melodians. Temptation was when I bought this. Uh, because it was fairly expensive, though I did get a very good price. Uh, the temptation was to uh, sell my two Erica's. I'm really glad I didn't, because apart from anything, having played this for a few minutes, it's actually really nice to pick up uh, the Erica's. Uh, they're so nice and light, and I'm still working on a couple of chins on, on, on those, which I'm going to do some blogs on fairly soon. So I'm pretty glad I didn't sell them. And, you know, they have got their own sound, which in some ways I prefer to this, um, this has got some great sounds, of course, but I, you know, I still like those the sounds of my uh, Honer Erica. So if you've, you know, if you've got um, an Erica or a, or a poker work and you're thinking about grading to one of the uh, Costa Lotties, as they call them, um, then that's fine. That's great if you can afford it. But I would recommend hanging on uh, to your Erica or poker work because you'll be pretty glad that you did. I'm guessing. Um, so the way forward now is to. Uh, for me anyway, so practice this more. I'm still quite nervous on it as you can hear. I'm, it's taken me a little bit of uh, courage to do this video because, uh, you know, as I say, I've not been too well, but I, you know, I'm starting to feel a bit better now. Nothing life-threatening, so don't worry. Um, but I'm starting to feel a bit better now and uh, really enjoying playing again. I mean, there was a time where I just felt so ropey in sort of January and February, I just sat in here and I didn't even want to break the silence by picking on the instrument. Glad that's, that's you know, no longer the case and I'm really back into playing, really enjoying um, playing and I've enjoyed doing this blog this morning. So there we are, I'm going to carry on practicing on this tune, I'll give you another version of it at the end of this video and uh, also going to be working on uh, some tunes on my uh, Erica's and there'll be some more blogs fairly soon. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you soon.